The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to Starwind webinar series. My name is Max Kalamitsev, and today we'll talk how to get 10 times faster backups with virtual tape libraries. But before we start the event, let me just do quick audio check as well as quick video check to make sure you're viewing the right screen, to make sure you're hearing me loud and clear. So please use questions and answers panel to give me a brief audio and video feedback of the quality. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So you can hear me loud and clear. So let me tell you a little bit about myself so you know who is the host of the event. So I'm Starbun Virtual Send Product Manager. I had a lot of experience in this company and in storage area. I've worked for more than eight years in Starwind and Rocket Division software for quality assurance and then technical support, both pre-sale and post-sale, so I know how our software worked and I know the problems and the issues our potential customers are encountering and what they really need in their virtualization environments. And uh, I haven't worked a lot out of Starwind but that was also a little of storage experience and now I'm also hosting the Starwind webinar series. Now we are recording this webinar just for your information so if you want to show it to your colleagues, friends, you can download the recording after we finish this session. Now, a brief agenda of our today's event. First, we'll cover some introduction into tapes. Like, we have a tape lining going all the way from first mainframes to 90s and to nowadays. Then, we'll see the issues we face in the backup to tape scenario in the modern world, in the world of 24-7 production environments and global virtualization, then we'll see what is actually virtualizing a tape mean for us, what does it bring for us. Then we'll also cover the D to D to T, the mysterious acronym. And of course we'll have a Q&A session, you'll be able to ask all your questions and quick wrap up. Right, so at the beginning of our journey we had a classic configurations of 90s and beginning of zeros, so millennium era. We had a bunch of application servers connected to our backup server which performed all the backups to the central tape library. Tapes were good, tapes remain good, and there was absolutely no problem using them, and there is no problem using them nowadays in an environment like this. As long as you size everything properly, you can live with that. But here's what happens when we virtualize everything. All those benefits start becoming a little questionable. So right now, we have all of our applications running inside those virtual machines. We have just a few servers in our production environment. And it starts being a question, where do we put our tape library? How does it fit in the modern virtualization scenario? And there is also a question, where do we connect it? We cannot really connect it to any hypervisor and pass it through to the virtual machines to do the backups properly. Yeah, you may be able to do so with Hyper-V, but there are definitely going to be some issues with vSphere or Citrix Zen. So there is still the backup server which remains, and you probably need to connect the tape library to the backup server. Of course, you can use some other server on the network and, let's say, add Starvin's tape redirector to the configuration so you can connect your virtual, sorry, so you connect your physical tape library 
to a virtual machine and this virtual machine will do all the backups so you have less hardware running and more being done with just few servers but here's the issue a lot of our customers encountered when moving into a virtualized environment and realizing that they are now much more flexible, their environment is much more flexible. They now want a 24-7 production and they want all their applications to be available constantly and they want all of their applications to be backed up and they want to preserve the current backup infrastructure. So everything's nice and easy and your virtual machines are getting backed up. You can back up all the application data as often as you like but when your environment grows the applications stop meeting that backup window. So if you have several hours for taking a complete backup of the system and you have much more applications than a single tape can fit or you need multiple tapes for that and it just takes too much time to do the backup. In this case your applications start to suffer. If you don't have a normal backup any issue in your production environment can lead to data loss or your recovery point objective increases dramatically which is not something you really want in a flexible and robust production environment. So there are multiple ways of dealing with it and essentially there may be an option even to exclude the tape completely but hey we have multiple people here who probably came to learn how they can reuse their existing backup. So let's uh, launch a quick poll here. On the GoToMeeting control panel you'll see a quick poll which has a simple question. Are you using tapes as your main backup storage? Okay, 81% voted. Eighty-five percent. We nearly have the majority. Ninety-two percent. Ninety-six percent. That's going to be a whopper. Okay. Right. So we have an approximate 50-50 distribution. We have 56% saying no and 44% saying yes. In our particular case, and people tend to use backups because it's a really long-lasting medium. In some cases, it is much more long-lasting compared to any spindle disk or CDs which tend to perish within 10 years, as we recently figured out. And uh, it's just a good idea to leave the tape in the configuration, but how can we overcome that issue of not being to back up all of our applications instantly and maybe simultaneously? The tape has its speed limitations. The tape library is still a physical box with certain connections to it and we need to deal with it or we have to change it or as 21st century solution we can virtualize it and the idea behind virtualizing a tape is fairly simple you present a disk a simple SATA disk or it can be a partition on your HDD it can be a RAID, 
it can be a JBOD. You just present your traditional spindle storage and Starwind Virtual Tape Library emulates it as a tape autoloader. And your backup application doesn't even know it's backing up, not to a tape, but to a bunch of spindle disks. It still does the same backup jobs. They're still consistent. Their integrity is not changed. The architecture of your backup jobs is not changed at all. You simply substitute your old physical tape with a completely virtualized solution, which is faster, which is more flexible, and of course, fits in your backup window now. Because with a virtualized tape library, you can now back up multiple applications from multiple departments. You don't have the capacity limitations, so you don't have to change a tape. You can technically create multi terabyte backup which is bigger than current LTO tapes can handle with absolutely no constraints. Now, what are the additional benefits of getting this configuration in your environment, a part of preserving your existing backups? We have another poll here and the poll is to address your concerns with existing tape backups. Based on that, I will try to address all of those concerns. So feel free to tick the check boxes. You can have multiple checked in this poll. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys see what I see, but this dynamic polling looks so great and it is nearly finished. Okay, 62%, 70%, and we get to a majority here. Okay, 78%. Lazy 22% of the audience. Okay, even though we have, okay, 81%. So let me give you a brief idea of the votes distribution here like it looks in the industry. Only 9% of our attendees are happy with their tapes. Then the, there is at least 40% of people who have issues with connecting their tape library to their backup server when it's virtualized. 42% say that there are too many tapes to manage and I cannot blame them. And of course uh, there are a lot more, yeah, there are 63% of people who say that there is just too much data for a direct tape backup. So that's exactly the case where we do not fit the backup window. We are not able to fit under our regulatory requirements or just under our RPO and RTO requirements with the amount of data we operate in our production. Of course, there is a way to extensively change that. You can implement multiple tape libraries, but that doesn't change much. And uh, as a dessert here, 21% says, I want to get rid of my tapes immediately. Just get those things away from me. I don't want to use them for my backups. Now, I'm closing this poll. Right. So. Here is what Starbend Virtual Sand can do for you. 
Of course, if your tape library doesn't connect to your back backup server, that can be easily addressed with Starwind. Since virtual tape library is not only converting spindles into an auto loader you're so familiar with, it's also presenting it over iSCSI. So you can now present your JBOD, your storage of the backup server, or just local storage of your hypervisor as a tape to a backup software running on the virtual machine. And that virtual machine is doing all the backups now. So there are absolutely no issues fitting it into any virtualization environment, be it Citrix Zen, be it Hyper-V, be it vSphere, you name it. Then, there are too many tapes to manage, some of you say, and that is true. With the virtual tape library, you simply manage the files on your hard drive. You can now prioritize your backups, and you basically offload them to tapes in blocks. So there is no need to keep a separate tape for one application or for one virtual machine. You can do the backup job to a virtual tape library and then offload it. We'll cover that on the next slide. Too much data for a direct tape backup, guys? That's also covered by Starbent Virtual Tape Library solution. We can do a backup of any size and there is no real limitation to that because we are now not introducing the physical part into it. We can create a 100 terabyte array based on SATA drives really easy with modern SATA drives that would fit in six units or even less and simply do a, even a full backup on a nightly basis I would say. And remember that everything here happens over TCP IP, so there is no proprietary fiber or SAS connections here. Everything is transparent as it can be. Now, for those who want to get rid of tapes immediately, you just throw the tapes away. You just virtualize them, use your local storage or, let's say, a SAN or a JBOT to keep all your backups. You now manage a disk array and you do not manage the old drives which you need to mark and stuff like that. So now, what is that DDT I mentioned previously? It's not the pesticide which uh, was quite popular in the first and second half of the 20th century. It's a disk to disk to tape backup scenario. So now, for those who are still under regulatory requirements, we can do the backup to a virtual tape library, which is essentially SATA storage on your server. And then, when you have some time, when your applications are lo not loaded, or right after you finished backing up your applications, you start the lengthy procedure of backing up to the actual physical tape. You're still under the code. You meet all the regulatory requirements, but now you're not tied to your physical tape constraints like backup window and uh, single tape capacity and stuff like that. You can now manage all of that a little bit later and you have much more flexibility with it. You can back it up to physical tapes, you can back it up to external hard drives, let's say for daily basis, and then you do a complete last resort backup to tape let's say once a year or once a month. I'm not sure what the regulatory requirements currently are but people who came to us saying that tapes are killing them because of the regulatory requirements they didn't look happy so when we introduced this model to them we've seen that uh, the issue nearly got away and right now you go to online communities and pe where people are discussing how to stay within the limits and not violate the code, this is one of the frequent solutions in that market. Now, all of you may be wondering how 
does it work? Can I see it working? And the answer is yes, you can. We will have a VTL demo this Thursday. And if you go to starwind.com slash events and then locate the second webinar, I think by the time we finish it will be first webinar, vitalize your backup infrastructure and press the order a table button, you'll be able to get to another event hosted by my colleague Anatoly and Anatoly will be showing how virtual tape library actually works, how you connect it to your virtualized backup application or to a physical backup application and you'll basically learn about VTL in a nice relaxed atmosphere of our every Thursday tap room. I really recommend to sign up for attending these on a weekly basis. It's a really nice format and people tend to learn more about software, more about serious IT stuff when they're not under stress and people are not fixing their ties while explaining about some new technology or a breakthrough in IT world. So feel free to order a table. With that, I would like to thank everyone for attending our today's event and our viewing the presentation here. I hope you learned something new and to make sure that I don't go away without answering your questions, we have a lot of them in the list. So let me start. It's time for your questions. I already have several questions here I'm trying to prioritize and let me know if you have any additional questions and feel free to enter them in the questions and answers box of GoToMeeting toolbar. And a quick share of our poll. Okay, so first question is, can I connect VTL to my backup virtual machine? Uh, yes, the answer is you can. We have multiple customers who use this configuration with Microsoft Data Protection Manager, with Veeam, as well as CA and Backup Exec. So there are multiple implementations of this config and all of those are used on a daily basis in production environments across the world. Now, uh, oh, this is also regarding the virtual machine. Okay, can I, okay, so can I connect a physical tape to a virtual machine using BTL? Uh, you cannot connect a physical tape to a virtual machine using VTL, however, you can connect a physical tape library to a virtual machine using Starvent Tape Redirector. The software installs on the box where you have the tape library attached and passes the library through over iSCSI directly to your virtual machine. And in the middle as we already discussed during our event, you can have the virtual tape layer which gets you the flexibility and resilience you want. Okay, any more questions? Okay, we have a person writing a question right now. Stay tuned. Okay, and here comes 
a nice theoretical question. Tape backup or iSCSI, which one is better? Uh, I would say that iSCSI with virtual tape is better because you have much more flexibility compared to regular tape backup. As we discussed during the presentation, there are some constraints associated with physical tapes and it is a good idea to get rid of those constraints by just implementing direct disk backup or if you want to preserve your current backup infrastructure, then you use a virtual tape library from Starwind. Tape backup is really good, it's really cheap for gigabytes per dollar and there are a lot of good things about it but without knowing the exact configuration it may be hard to tell. So I guess that may be a really good question for our tap room. So if you write me your configuration, I may ask my colleague Anatoly to go through that one during the every Thursday tap room. Right. Thank you so much. All right. I would like to thank everyone for attending our today's event. I hope it was interesting for you. You can download Starwind Virtual Send 30-day trial as well as the VTL trial on our website. And feel free to contact us if you have any additional questions on sales at starwindsoftware.com or info at starwindsoftware.com. Thank you so much. Bye.